Between 1820 and 1860, thousands of German immigrants arrived on American shores. Their numbers peaked in 1848 after a democratic revolution in the German states failed, forcing those revolutionaries to flee across the Atlantic Ocean. They go to the big port cities, New York, Philadelphia, Boston, uh, on down into the south, and especially New Orleans. And German immigrants will settle both in the cities, so you start to see Klein Deutschlands, little Germanys, forming in almost every large American port city. But Germans, many of them come as farmers, so they press on into the interior. Native-born Americans looked upon German immigrants more favorably than the Irish, whom they associated with poverty, illiteracy, and crime. German immigrants benefited in some ways or had a better reputation than Irish immigrants did. Now, they were not welcomed with open arms. You can go back and find anti-German cartoons and anti-German campaigns and anti-German riots that take place in cities before the Civil War. But they were comparatively seen as a better class of immigrants than the Irish. One thing that was key is that most of them, or a lot of them, came as city dwellers and with skills so, and with education. So when they came to big American cities, they, there wasn't quite the same sort of jarring uh, shock that the Irish felt. Many Germans had enough personal savings to migrate away from the crowded cities of the Northeast, and they prospered as farmers in America's heartland. German communities valued culture and learning, and they quickly established German language schools, theaters, and beer gardens. Germans become big advocates for the public school system, and they also brought with them the tradition of kindergarten, which is an early education program that Americans very quickly adopt. Education reform was just one of the many causes that German immigrants championed in the years before the Civil War. Many of them were involved in the political movements in, in Germany and the efforts towards democracy, and a lot of them were refugees when those movements were, were suppressed. And a lot of them had been exposed to socialism and to other reform ideals. And not surprisingly, this means that they embrace the, one of the biggest social reform movements in antebellum America, which is the abolitionist movement. Germans also contributed to American culture in less profound but equally lasting ways. They gave us the Christmas tree, lighter, fizzier beer, the hamburger, and the hot dog. <laughs> 